Disclaimer, numerous manacs were harmed during the making of this video. Hi everyone, Kedor here, coming at you today with another Grievous new video. So, what you're seeing right now is the result of my latest tasting, and I wanted to find a way that was absolutely reliable. I, as I already told you multiple times, I hate RNG in my life. I want RNG out of my life, and I think I got it. Um, I don't like to say 100%, but it works every time. So, careful. I already made quite... see? That's amazing. So I already made kind of a lot of videos about um, the Grievous Nuke team. And um, right there, if I don't get it wrong, and in the description below will be a link to what I think is actually a, an amazing team, that is the IPD team. So the IPD, and you don't need the Zeta again on IPD for the team to work, yada yada, is already working absolutely amazing for me. But I wasn't satisfied with it. Because, yes, some pretty little things were left to RNG and sometimes uh, you could have some troubles against the Marauder comps that you see kind of a lot today on defense because, uh, yeah, Marauder is the way to counter almost any counter to Malak today. So if you're afraid of Pane, if you're afraid of that kind of stuff, just throw Marauder in there and you're fine, you know? So I wanted to find something that did work quite a bit better against Marauder and I did! What you're going to see today is the result of kind of a lot of testing that I did actually and well I yet have to lose against a uh, Malak team with Marauder with that team. This team also works really fine versus the classic team of Trooper but it has a little twist to it as you will see later in the video. But again I want this video to be for you kind of a companion guide of uh, the IPD comp. Both teams are absolutely amazing and you should use the one you think suits you the best and the one that just feels right you know i like big flashy things so i really do enjoy a lot this kind of thing Bink. <laughs> i love it I, I i just love this kind of screen and uh yeah yeah i i i actually enjoyed that better than the ipd com but you know that's just me both of these teams just work perfectly fine but in my humble opinion, this team right there is just a smidge better. Now I hear you. You're saying you already did this team and it, you said before that it was less reliable than the IPD call. Yes. Yes, I did. But then I went back in and I changed some stuff. So let me keep going with that. I'm going to show you quite kind of a lot of things. So one of the big problems of this team was to get the modding right and stuff. Well, get ready, it's really not that hard anymore. The first thing you have to know is that the turn order should be as follows. Always BB-8, HK-47, then T3, then Grievous, then L3. What I wanted to say is that HK-47 can be replaced for IG-88. No problems. I do advise you to go for HK-47 because that makes Modding Grievous easier. Okay? Okay. So, then for Zetas, you need Metroid Monster City on Grievous, of course, and you need Master Gear Head on T3 and 4, of course. That has been the basis of the team, and these two Zetas are what makes the Nuke team work. If you don't have those Zetas, the team won't work. Okay? Okay. And then, one of the problems of the IPD comp is that you need the second Zeta on T3 and 4, and some people don't like it. And you also need that stun gun on T3 and 4, and some people don't like it either. This team doesn't. This team requires a good T3 and 4 and a gear 12 one, but not a gear 12 one 5, and you don't need the second Z on T3 and 4. Good news. But you kind of need to have L3 Z. It's not like 100% required, but if you don't have it, you might lose some games. So I do highly, highly, highly recommend that you slap that Z on. Because I still think that L3 is actually kind of an amazing character, and that's one that will always have a future as long as Droid exists. And I don't think Droids are going anywhere. I, I think they are here to stay a bit. Even for just a bit. Okay. And for gear, of course, you do need a Grievous to be gear 13. That's kind of, you know, makes sense. Uh, you also need T3 and 4 to be gear 12, because he won't be tanky enough if he's in gear 12. Though... A gear 11 with really good mods could be enough? Eh? And then you also want L3 
Toby Gear 12 for, you know, the extra tankiness and stuff. Again, you might be able to make the team run without it, but I do recommend it. Um, both BB-8 and HK-47 should be Gear 12 already for you, and if they're not, actually I don't think you need them Gear 12. You, you can really go out with them Gear 10, 11 maybe, and just make it work with modding. So, yeah, yeah, I, that's basically all you need. And now the good news about this team right there is that uh, the modding is really easy. So, IPD comp, modding was kind of eh, because you needed um, IG-88 to have really good potency and really good crit chance. And you also uh, needed T3 and 4 to have some of these stats. Now, this team is like the easiest to get. As long as you get the turn order, so the speeds, right? You just want them tanky. That's all there is. Favor protection over health, if you can. Just get them tanky. That, that's it. That, that's just it. Just get them tanky. You don't care about the rest. T3 is a bit different. T3, you want him really tanky. Because if he's dead, you're dead. So give him 3 HP sets and give him 4 protection primaries. Okay? Okay. Again, that's that's really not that hard to get. You don't need like fancy speed, you don't need fancy stuff. Just just yeah. Grievous. Grievous is hard. Grievous is the one you need to mod perfectly for this to work. It's 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 not that hard, really. But you do need good mods, and the thing is you don't need fast mods, you need good mods, and that's a bit different. Most people don't really have these middle of the road good mods, and most people don't want to 6 star them. For this team to work, you're going to have to do that. So, you have three benchmarks, okay? You have three benchmarks. Benchmark 1, crit chance. Crit chance, you want 100% crit chance with Grievous. Okay, you have T3 in the team and you have your lead, so you have a bit of uh, crit chance already done for you. So if you're going with the HK lead, you need 62% crit chance. That makes 100 in the long run. If you go with IG-88 lead, you need 72%, and that's a lot harder to get. I myself can't get to 72%, and that's why all the testing you're going to see is done with HK lead. I, I mean, yeah, that's... That's because I can't get Grievous to 72%, and that testing already takes a lot of time and a lot of crystals to me, and I'm still free to play, so I don't get a lot of crystals, so I don't want uh, my footage to be fucked up just because I hit some RNG bots. Eh. So, yeah, I'm going with the HK myself. I also don't have the Dark Raven team sue me, but I don't think the Dark Raven team needs HK anyway. I in the long run, this is required. If you want RNG out of your life, you need 62% with HK, 72 with IG88. Any percent under that is percent left to RNG. Okay, okay. Benchmark 2 speed. That's not really a benchmark, but that's really a strong advice. Um, you need good speed. You need to play before the opposing team, and for that you count on the BB-8 um, unique. BB-8 unique gives you pretty good speed, but it's not like that. that Awesome, that's like not like a hundred percent god. Stop playing when I'm recording, stop talking. Um, so 206 speed is you should never listen. 206 speed is what you need to go faster than 342 uh, speed Sith Empire. That's fine, you know, that's plenty enough. If you face higher speeds, you will have to make your speed higher. If you put your speed lower than this, that means that you are open to them playing before you. And, well, now you're warned. So, don't complain if Grievous plays too late. Okay. Third benchmark is HP. You basically just want as much HP as you want. You should go for uh, health primaries, except for the triangle. Yeah. Just go HP. Like, 100k is minimum. Don't go lower than that. I mean, you can go lower than that and be fine, but try aiming for this. That's really not that hard. I mean, Grievous is like a big punch bag anyway, so you're fine. Uh, let me show you the stats of my Grievous. So, uh, yeah, my Grievous is there, so you can see HP is above 100k, um, speed is fine, and critical damage go with a crit damage triangle. That's really important. Okay?
Okay. Fine. You heard me, okay? You want your arrow and uh, the circle and the cross to be half, but you want to create damage triangle, okay? And see? Critical chance is fine. I, so, as I told you, I can get him high enough. I can get him above 68.5%. Uh, so that's why I'm not trying, because I do hit those 3% sometimes, and I want something to be absolutely reliable. Now, let's see what happens. So, you've already seen the team. Let's go in against a Marauder team. That They are everywhere right now. Anyway. So, now, what is going to happen? Well, what was happening before uh, was that you couldn't really say who um, they were going to hit, and you couldn't really make so that your droids would die one by one. And your droids dying one at a time is the big deal. Because, um, and every time two droids die at the same time, you just lost a trigger for Grievous Zeta. So you want him to die Y by one, and you want that to be 100% accurate. So, is there a way to control the fight that well? Well, observe. So what you're going to do? Roll, AoE, AoE. This never changes. Okay, Th this is just fine. This is okay. Go with that, that's perfect. But now, now Grievous is going to play. So what was happening before was that uh, when Malax get to play, he's going to strip taunt away from someone. So you couldn't really control who it was going to be, who was going to be hit, and what was going to happen. Okay? So when you think about it for a second, what can you have the AI do? Well, you can force the AI to actually drain, because as soon as a drain is available, Malak is going to drain. So what you do is that you crawl on Malak. You also strip a bit of health from him and you get some Grievous. So as told, he gets under his little benchmark himself and he will always do because you are guaranteed to crit because your Grievous is modded right, right? So this is a 100% guarantee. He also kind of always target BB-8, I don't really know why, I think that's an AI thing. I mean, I've did some testing and he always targets B-1 when he's there, so I think he aims for lower health on something. But yeah, for me, he always seems to go for BB-8. That's fine, let him have it. Okay, so now, and three plays. And again, another weird thing. So you can see that Grievous is feared, and he will, he will always be. Again, that's part of the plan. So, uh, after there, well, she's a tank, right? So you're going to tell him. No, you're not. No, you're not. Think about it for a second. The only way a uh, Sith Empire can uh, take taunt away is, uh, like, for free, uh, is with Malak right there. He just played, his turn meter is depleted. So he's not going to strip that taunt away anytime soon. Yep. You're not going to taunt with L3. You're going to punch someone with her, and that's it. And I always wanted to hit on Bastille anyway, so I'm going for her. And that's it. So, see, oh, there is my face. See, she's in taunting, so you are now 100% guaranteed that they're going to go for BBA. Okay? Okay. You can see Raven right there is really happy to go at BBA. Now, Bastille is doing her thing. Doing. There you go. This is the usual turn order anyway. Marauder is playing now. So Marauder now has two available targets. BB-8 is still alive because L3 Zeta saved him. Okay? Okay. And now, well, you can see that the Zeta isn't really needed because BB-8 would be to die right there. The result would be exactly the same, actually. So L3 Zeta isn't always needed. It, it just helps for, like, a, a bit more win rate in some fringe cases. So now Marauder is going to hit either BB-8 and kill him, or HK, because he has death mark, you know? There you go. So he's going to kill someone, basically. Uh, you see that damage? Uh, yeah, uh, that, that one. That one, yeah. Um, you can't really get HK to survive this with death mark on his head either. So 100% a droid dies right now. What is happening? Well, Fear is going away in Grievous. Grievous is getting a turn, and Fear is gone, because, the, yeah, he passes his turn. But uh, Corrupted Battle Meditation is off too. So now, what is going to happen? 
well, you have a leader with death mark. Who are they going to hit? Well, of course he's going to do his grenade, that doesn't really change anything, but they're just going to kill the guy with death mark. Now, you can taunt with L3 at this point because they're just dying, you know? Because the next in line to play, well, there is Malak, he's going to palm someone. If I had not uh, taunted right there, actually, he would when he would go for uh, for HK. No big difference, because now he's doing his thingy. What is going to happen? Boom! Every time. So there is kind of a weird turn going around, and uh, it's it's the one where uh, HK is actually faster than Marauder. So that's something you won't see really often, but some guys do play this, so I'm showing this to you. Um, just really quick, you're going to do kind of exactly the same thing, you know, you're going to throw at Malak, then you're going to punch Bastila in a stupid face. That, that's not something that you should be really aware of, but you know, if you find this, know that you have to do this. So see, HK just played before Marauder, and the thing is, he's going to take fear away from Grievous. And that's actually the big deal. That's actually the really big deal. Because now, when a druid dies, pretty soon, anytime, just... What was I doing? Yeah, okay. So, a druid is going to die. See Marauder? Yeah, uh, a, druid, a druid is dead. Here you go. So, now, the thing is, you have Corrupted Battle Meditation on your head. And, uh, well, you won't uh, nuke the team right now, except if you are a very lucky man. So, the big thing is, uh, if you go for Malak and you crit him, you will be feared. That's fine, because you still have two druids to go with. Okay? But, if you crit Malak and don't kill him, he will be under his kind of little threshold, and he will have crit avoidance. And that's really bad, because if he has crit avoidance, he could survive the big nuke next time. So what you do is that you AoE, because now if you AoE at that point, see, okay, I didn't crit Malak, and I don't have footage of me doing that thing against that team and critting Malak, because this team is so, uh, so rare that you will not find him all the time. But let's say I just crit him. If I crit him, I will get him under his second threshold, he will drain, and he will get back high enough to be above his threshold, because he will, he will go against L3, because she is taunting, you know, and he will go again above his threshold. That's how you do it, basically. Sometimes you crit him and you kill him, but that's fine. And now, you play again. You don't have a, a corrupted battle meditation, you're going to kill them all. Had you been feared, L3 is still there to die. Perfect. Just go ahead and kill them all. This team is a bit weird. You won't find it very often, but be very careful when you fight to watch if HK plays before Marauder. That will almost never happen, because Marauder is really a lot faster than HK in real life. But some people want to fuck with you, and will go with that team. Okay? Okay. Now that uh, this is out of the way, uh, a bit of a reminder. So, in order to just check the things, always start with roll, then AoE, then AoE, then Grievous crawls at Malak every time, and L3 punches someone. Not Malak. You don't want L3 to get feared. Okay? Then, when L3 plays again, taunt. If the heal is available, heal. Okay? Okay, I, I should have put that right there. And then Grievous plays. If he has corrupted battle meditation, that means that HK played before, you do AoE. If uh, Grievous uh, plays and doesn't have corrupted battle meditation, well, you just AoE anyway, because you're going to kill them. That, that's, yeah, that's easy. Really, that's easy. Okay? So, that just works perfectly. That just works every time against those teams. I mean, I, I really don't have any trouble beating those teams myself. But what about Trooper? Because, well, some people still run Trooper in defense. I mean, that, that's something you see kind of a lot, actually. Well, depends on the shard. You know, I've been told... I've been told different things. Depend on the shard, really. So, 
you got the same. You roll, you AoE, you AoE. That's always the same. You will always do the same. Then you will crawl at Malak, because that's really what we are doing now. Okay? The first thing we are doing now is crawling at Malak. Always. Okay? Okay. So then it rains. That's fine. Then, again, same way to control the fight. You're going to punch someone in the face. I just like punching Bastila in the face. I just, I just, yeah. So then they do their thing. So now, this is where the trick parts begin. There is no Marauder. So, of course, HK is going to play first. And of course, he's going to uh, strip um, Fear away from Grievous. And the thing is, this team right there doesn't have the damage to just destroy a droid or white. See, they're all alive and you get to play again. So, at that point, what you want to do, since you still have your droids alive and L3 gets to play again, don't taunt. Just punch someone, okay? And even better than this, punching Trooper makes him fire at HK because there is no taunt on the field, okay? There is only death mark because of the grenade. Then Malax just punches someone to death. That's fine. Grievous plays, and Grievous has corrupted battle meditation. And this is also where this is a bit different. The best way to go, you have another taunter right there. Go for him. That's even easier that with the AoE. Just go for him. Well, uh, that was, I think that this, uh, this is the first time I went ahead of Trooper and I was thinking about all the implication and seeing that Raven is about to play is what decided me. I mean, oh yeah, so sure, no, I just do this. Uh, do this, please. Yeah. And then, okay, she, she plays again. Well, at that point, I know that the next thing that is going to happen is that Raven is going to do his AoE. And if Raven does his AoE, I'm, I'm fine. So I can do pretty much anything. Still should have taunted at that point, but yeah, here you go. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. Works every time. Works absolutely every time. The, the only difference was really at, at the start. Crawl at Malak and don't taunt with L3. Don't taunt with L3 at the start. So again, same same guy, same team. And big shout out to him because he's one of my guild mates, Schmutz, and he just puts the team I want to try the to try it against. All the same. Crawl at Malak. Yeah. Then he drains. Then go ahead and punch uh, punch anyone. Not Malak. Okay, this is different. Have you noticed? Yes, this can happen too. Sometimes, you know, that's that's the, the damage variance. That, that's a bit weird. You don't know why they do that much damage. Well, actually, you do. Well, that's T3 not landing his debuffs, even through uh, the, um, the tenacity down and stuff. You know, that happens. Sometimes that happens. Well, actually, that's exactly the same thing. You still have L3 to go. So, here you go. Again, always go for Trooper. That's a lot easier for you. You're sure that you won't get feared. Go for Trooper if he's there. Don't. Who are, they, who are they going to kill? Well, since you did go for Malak, they're going to kill L3 because they don't have a choice. And then you just go ahead. So see, this team now is all about the manipulation. You, you just... You just let the fight go the way you want it to go. So, against Trooper, always start with Roll AoE AoE, that doesn't change. Always claw that Malak and always punch a fool, that still doesn't change. Still don't punch Malak. When L3 plays again, with that comp, she's going to play multiple times. If BB8 and HK are alive, punch again. If one is missing, don't. Is it enough? Really, that's it. And well, then, yeah, I had to do a, a little second screen there. If Grievous plays and he has corrupted battle meditation, you basic trooper. And he, if he doesn't have corrupted battle meditation, you just nuke him. See that team? Well, you're going to see that quite a bit now. Because, uh, yeah, I've seen that actually pop up quite a bit recently. 
people are using HK somewhere else, you know, somewhere else. So, how does how does um, the team works again that one? Yeah, well, it's not really that hard. The problem actually was HK for the team. So, Claudette Malak, punch someone, you can punch anyone, but I still punch Bastila. And, uh, yeah, still going just the way you want it to go. You know, no big deal. Eh, what am I going to do now? Oh, I guess I would just nuke him. Yep. That that was just a quick last one, you know, that that's a bit of a weird one. I almost forget that uh, that I had that one around, but yeah, you can see that too. So, some, some final tips. Um, quickly to point out, uh, there is a weird comp with um, um, Geo Alpha as a fifth. Against that comp, go for the IPD version. Okay? It, it works absolutely every time because you have six targets for your debuffs. So, uh, I will try to put uh, another, another thing here right there and link in the description. IPD version, you have... Let me... I want this to be... This is really important. I've been asked this question multiple times. Okay, the alpha comp, the, the comp with the, the Geo Alpha, you have to make IPD play just before Grievous. If you don't, the brute is going to taunt again and you're screwed. Okay, that's really easy. Actually, the team was already countered when it came out by the non-Zeta IPD, okay? The, the team is really easy to beat. The, just don't be afraid of this Geo thingy, okay? And then, the last thing I want to say is that if you can't mod Grievous right, well, you have to farm mods, because the speed of Grievous will be uh, the limiting factor for the range of teams that you can beat. The um, crit chance is absolutely mandatory. Okay, if you don't have it, you're leaving RNG in your life. If you send me, if I just again receive another one of those, it doesn't work, and I check your stats and you are under the benchmark, I will be in the right to kill you. Okay, fine. Now that we get it, you need the health. You need the health to be high enough. That's also something pretty mandatory. Well, now I think that all is said and done, so I'm going to leave you at that. I think I just covered uh, everything I can for the nuke team, so please go nuke some fools. I hope this was helpful guys, and I thank you very much for watching this video.